Hi. This video is going to be on area. Now, by the time students get to middle school, they will have done lots of work with area and they'll probably know several formulas for finding area. But what this activity is really trying to do is to get students to recall what the concept of area actually is. And so if we ask a middle schooler, what's area? A lot of times they'll say, oh, it's space times height. And what they're really saying when they say that is they're giving us a formula for one type of shape. And that's not what area actually is. Area is the amount of squares of any size uh, that we like that it takes to cover an object. And so this activity, even though they can use their area formulas, at some point they're not going to be able to use those and it's going to force them to use this concept of what area is. And even if they do know their area formulas, it's often more efficient for them to use a different technique to find the area. So I think that activity is pretty cool because of that. Another thing that this activity can do is the techniques that they learn through doing this will link to another activity which I'll do in another video and that is finding the Pythagorean theorem and discovering that formula just through finding areas on dot paper which is pretty cool I think. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what this page looks like, the one that I use with my students. This is available on the Math Institute website for a free download. And really, it's just some triangles and some parallelograms. But I do have them in a certain order, and I'll show you why I put these in this order um, in a little bit. But you can feel free to make your own shapes and designs. I think as long as the vertices of the shape are on the dots, then you can make any crazy shapes you want and have students find the areas of those. So let's do a few examples and I'll show you how this works. We can see that in the upper left corner we have a key. So this right here is one square unit. And so we're going to try to figure out how many of these squares it takes to cover each of the objects. And so over here I have a rectangle and we can see very clearly that that's going to be two square units. Now, at this point, I just let students work on their own, but we can help them through some of this if we want to. Um, but when they work in groups, they usually do really well at this. So if we look at example A, we can see that that is actually just half of our original square. And if they want to, they can envision the actual square being there. And then we can see it's definitely cut in half. And so we don't want that part up at the top. And so we're left with just it being one half for the area. Pretty simple example. The same thing with part B. Uh, we see that this is actually the example uh, right here, that this was a rectangle of two and it's just cut in half right down the diagonal. And the way we know it's cut in half is because we can see that we have two equal pieces. So we have this piece here that's shaded in, and that's exactly the same triangle that we want here in the white. So since they're equal sizes, they're each half of the entire amount, and since the entire amount is two, then we have that the area that's desired is just one. Now what's interesting about this one is students can do it this way, but at first they might actually try to make it into a square. So if we see this little triangle right here kind of, we could imagine cutting this down the center here and rearranging this piece and putting it up at the top to make a complete square. So sometimes students will try to do this work through rearranging the pieces to make squares and rectangles, which is what they do with their area formulas. Or they can use this method of looking at what's around it in a larger way and then just subtracting the missing amount. So if we look at example C, we could see they could do the same thing. In fact, this is very similar to the Montessori yellow material where they arrange uh, triangles into rectangles. And they could just simply cut off this top piece right here and rearrange it and put it down here to get our original rectangle of two. Um, or what they could do is they could see this as an entire square, which has an area of four, and it's cut down the middle, and so the area of that would just be two. If we look at example D, there's a couple ways that they could do this. Uh, one thing again is they could cut it down the middle and rearrange, and they see actually that this is composed of 
two of these triangles from B just back to back and kind of on their side. So they should know the area is going to be two. And again, they can do all this without finding the base, finding the height, multiplying, dividing by two. These are just easier to do just by observation. But if they want to, they could build this square. And they can see that this half the triangle on the left is half of this rectangle of two. So this red area and this white area here are equal to each other. We know that this area is one, and therefore this area down here is one. Same thing on the right-hand side. And so therefore the entire area of that triangle is two square units. So again, there's lots of different ways students can do this. Let's move on to example E over here on the left. Now this is one where students might right away say, oh, I can use the base times the height formula if they happen to know it. And we could talk about the fact that the height is an external height here. They might actually try to figure out um, what this length is, thinking this is the height. But we can see very easily that this is going to be um, simpler to do if we use this other method where we look at the entire rectangle. And in this case, the rectangle is 8 units. And we need to take away these two triangles that actually don't belong. What we want is what's this area that's remaining here. And for this triangle, it's actually harder to split this up and rearrange. Um, it's possible to do, but it's not very obvious about how this piece here will then, you know, will it actually make a parallelogram? Will it be the same angle? Um, but students can explore that, and that's perfectly fine for them to do. But if they do this approach, they see that the area is 8. This upper triangle is actually half of the entire rectangle. So that's 4. This bottom piece here is looking familiar. That's going to be our 1. And so now we see that the triangle that we want, this white triangle here, is the entire rectangle of 8 minus this triangle of 4 minus this triangle of 1. So that's going to be taking away 5. And so altogether, the area is going to be 3. So, so far, all of these triangles, there's multiple ways that students can do these. And then we come to letter F. And F is much trickier. Um, to use the base times height formula for this one would be very challenging. The base is actually this line right here, which they'd need to know the Pythagorean theorem to do. And they would have to come up with that this base is the square root of 2. And then the height would be from this point here, perpendicular to the base, which is actually going to be a length of the square root of 2 plus half the square root of 2. Then to multiply all that together, it's just a lot of work, and they'd have to use the Pythagorean theorem, which at this point we're assuming the students don't know. Um, but if students want to do that and they do know it, just as a fun exercise, they can see how much work that is, and it's actually pretty cool to actually get the area correctly um, through that. So we can use this method that we've done before, however, to calculate the area of the triangle. And if students are working on their own, they usually can get from A to E pretty well. They might not be using this exact method here, but they can just use their area formula for the triangle. Here they can't. And so if they haven't done this method before, we might want to suggest this method to help them uh, in a way that isn't giving them the problem how to do it, but helping them figure it out on their own. So we might want to revisit some of these other ones and look at some alternate ways to do that. So anyway, with this example F, we can build this rectangle. In this case, it's a square around here. And we see that the entire area of that is four square units. We have this triangle up here, which is one, because it's half of this upper rectangle. And again, because we've seen it here like in example B. We have this triangle on the left, which again is the same one from example B. And then we have this triangle in the bottom right, which is the same one from example A. So we're just combining the different work that the students have done previously into this new one. So if the entire shape, in this case the square, is 4, we want to take away these right triangles that are 1, 1, and a half. 
That's two and a half from four, which gives us a final answer of one and a half. As we look ahead for some of these examples, uh, this triangle in G um, is a challenging one, just like an F. In H, they actually do have a base and a height here that they could use. Um, here would be the base here. It's actually on its side. It's actually running vertically, and this height could be here. But at this point, it's interesting to see when they come to H, which method they use. Do they look for base and height like they might have done before? Or do they find this method simpler? So if you're observing students working through this, watching them do H and their method kind of tells you where students might be at. And then as students work through, they can go through the rest of these triangles. And then when they get to the parallelograms, the same thing happens again on this page, where they can use base and height formulas at first, but then eventually they become more difficult, where they really can't use base times height, and they're going to have to use this alternate method. So that's the areas on dot paper activity. What I really like about this activity is that I love to watch students work through the different puzzles and see how creative they can be trying to find the different areas. And it really gives me an insight into how the students are thinking. What I also like about this is that it doesn't require any prerequisites. So we can do this activity at any time. And I can even offer them different area puzzles throughout the year just to see if they remember it and kind of just as a fun little brain teaser, just to keep bringing up this activity over and over again. And it's a good reinforcement of the idea of area that can really be done at any time. Lastly, I love how using this technique can lead to the discovery of the Pythagorean theorem, which I will do in another video. So thank you for watching this and I hope you enjoyed the activity.